Thomas, we want to take you live to City Hall where New Orleans Mayor Latoya Cantrell and other city leaders are giving an update on Hurricane Francine. Every single day couldn't do it without the hardworking employees of city government and of course our partners here. Our city, as you know, uh, we are resilient and we are ready um, in regards to the uh, Hurricane Francine uh, coming our way. Uh, just my administration, all of our partners, we just continue to lean in and do the work. Uh, very proud, just proud of the residents of the city of New Orleans. And as I moved around uh, yesterday, even through the evening, the, the people, our people, um, they're listening. Uh, they're doing what we've asked them to do. Uh, and of course, um, we're just, again, we're ready, we're prepared. Um, our visitors as well, thank you so much. We did see an uptick even in those uh, signing up for NOLA uh, Ready Alerts. Um, as I mentioned on yesterday, because we have made solid and sound investments in our infrastructure, you know, we are prepared in much ways than we have ever been uh, before. Uh, we know that Hurricane Francine is expected to make landfall along central Louisiana coast uh, this evening as a category one. Impacts began last night and we know will last until tomorrow morning. Worst impacts for the city of New Orleans, and particularly our metro area, is expected this evening starting around 6 p.m. going through midnight. We're just continuing to urge all of our residents to shelter in place. This is the time, again, to hunker down. We're expecting heavy rainfall, a gusty winds, and of course, the possibility of isolated tornado activity in the city. Again, as I say, now's the time to hunker down, staying off our roads. You demonstrated that you know what to do last night, and you're continuing to do that throughout the day, but we're wanting, again, to encourage you to hold the line, stay focused, and stay prepared. Um, we're coordinating, as you know, with all of our partners, local, state, and federal. Of course, that includes our Louisiana State Police, GOSEP, Army Corps of Engineers, of course, our Louisiana National Guard, FEMA, boots on the ground, just a holistic approach uh, and a unified command. Also, our coordinating partners with the tourism and hospitality industry, our business community, transit services, hospitals, and shelters. You're going to hear from more of our leaders after me as we run uh, through this press conference as you normally uh, do. Again, on uh, today, it's just a real reminder, first responders, we are just stronger with you and really nothing without you. And I say today, thinking about 9-11 as I adorn my uh, fire department, but again, public safety team, just thank you for what you do and how you show up. We want our folks, again, to stay connected to real-time updates from the city of New Orleans by texting, again, all one word, word NOLA Ready, to 77295. Again, everyone plays a role uh, in keeping our city, keeping one another safe, and um, our greatest assets are our people, and particularly employees of the city of New Orleans, as I'm leaning on them every single day, but today and as we prepare for Hurricane Francine. I want to thank the members of the New Orleans City Council. Thank you, uh, district leaders, for identifying uh, your sandbag locations. They went off well yesterday. You were boosts on the ground. Appreciate that. Councilman Thomas, you said you need a little bit more volunteers. We're, we're, uh, I think we're solid in that regard as well. So with that, I'm going to ask uh, Director Colin Arnold to come forth, and we will proceed uh, through our leaders and uh, we'll take it from there. Yes, All right, Kyle. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you for your leadership. We were able to uh, have a really good mayor's briefing this morning. We had all of our department heads, city department heads, boards and commissions, uh, all, all of our relevant stakeholders, plus about 35 to 40 other uh, state federal partners. I mean, it was uh, a really good briefing. We're, um, we're ready to go and uh, we'll be looking forward to doing another briefing tomorrow once this is passed. The Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness continues to monitor Hurricane Francine. We are uh, under a hurricane watch and a tropical storm warning, and that remains in effect over the New Orleans area. Uh, Francine is a Category 1 hurricane. Uh, as the mayor mentioned, uh, impacts expected late afternoon to early evening today. 
Uh, residents are urged to shelter indoors during dangerous storm conditions. I've been watching this very closely over the past several advisories, uh, looking at the the hour to hour provided by the National Weather Service. You know what what I'm what I would like to communicate with the public is, you know, shortly after you watching this around 2 p.m., you're going to see uh, c uh, conditions start to diminish. Uh, rain will start to pick up. Winds will start to get, to pick up and get gustier. Uh, uh, critically, around 6 p.m. tonight, that's the time, seriously, to be indoors, be off the roads, hunker down, and be prepared to spend the night with family, with friends, uh, indoors through about 6 to 7 a.m. We'll start to see some gradual improvement. And then around noon tomorrow, you're going to see dramatic improvement. And so uh, we're obviously all looking forward to that. But just to give you a kind of an idea, there is a possibility uh, tonight, overnight tonight, particularly around midnight to about 4 a.m., winds gusting up to 70 miles an hour. That's possible. I'd say sustained winds around 40 miles an hour is 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 definitely uh, possible. And so those are the types of of um, winds that we're going to be looking at. So power outages can be a concern. We're communicating with energy. They're upstairs in our emergency operations center right now. All of our liaisons in the emergency operations center, all of our emergency support functions are in their seats. They will be here. They were here last night. They'll be here today, tonight, tomorrow, until we have gotten through this and it's over and we're looking at recovery. Um, I want to remind people, and you'll hear it uh, probably again, generator safety in the in the case of power outages if you're using a gasoline generator please make sure we lost more people during uh, Hurricane Ida to generators than we did to the storm and I, I cannot overstate that uh, rainfall uh, currently calling four to six inches uh, to potentially eight inches of rain over this event that would be from from now until tomorrow uh, afternoon tomorrow at noon um, I, I would say that the, those local amounts could be higher. Um, we're certainly, we're engaged with Sewage and Water Board. They're upstairs in the Emergency Operations Center as well. And, you know, they're in a good situation with pumps and power. Uh, but just, you know, expectation-wise, realize that certain times, if we get enough rain with this, you know, there will be street flooding. And that's why we want to continue to, you know, inform the public to stay indoors and stay off the roads. It, it keeps you safe, it keeps all of our people safe, and we'll get through this. Isolated tornadoes, always a possibility with a storm like this, particularly when we're here in the northeast quadrant of the storm. Um, you know, those winds can become, uh, you know, um, bowed and circular and start creating tornadic activity. So isolated tornadoes, it's not a, not a major concern, but it is a, a possibility, and we want to make sure that everyone knows about that. We have set up uh, several... Uh, rec centers. We started off with three when we briefed you the other day. Uh, when we saw the east trend, we wanted to lean forward more. You know, under the mayor's leadership, we uh, have put generators on five more facilities, and those, they're not open. Uh, they will be after the storm, should it be necessary, and we'll make sure that uh, those are emergency resource centers where you can go and get supplies, air conditioning, uh, water, um, charge devices, uh, exchange medical uh, uh, batteries uh, for devices, oxygen bottles and the like. And so you'll hear a little bit more about that as well. But again, they're not open right now. They'll be open once the storm passes, should it be necessary. Um, again, and I cannot emphasize enough, please, starting this afternoon, particularly tonight, this evening, six, seven o'clock, get indoors get off the roads. Um, residents, we've had a, a, a quite a bit of interest in NOLA Ready uh, emergency alerts, uh, which is always heartening to us. We have over 300,000 subscribers who have opted in to receive our alerts. Uh, you can do that by texting NOLA Ready, one word, NOLA Ready to 77295. If you'd like those alerts in Spanish, text ESP to 77295 and you'll receive the same alerts in Spanish. And you can always visit us at ready.nola.gov. Huge banner across the top of both the NOLA Ready website and the city's main website that says Hurricane Francine. Click here for more details and that's where you can find more information. Um, with that, I will turn it over to Dr. Jenna Vegno, Director of the New Orleans Health Department. And thank, thank you. you Colin.
Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thanks, Colin. Um, just very briefly, the health department has been in contact with all of our local hospitals. They have activated their emergency plans. Um, they are identifying no challenges at this time, proceeding with um, inpatient care as normal. Uh, we've also been in touch with our dialysis centers who got people in early and have a plan for dialysis. Uh, we have been in contact with all of the nearly 70 independent living facilities who are required to communicate with us every day in a declared emergency. If you remember, this came out of the last storm. And I'm very happy to report that we've been in communication with all of them. None of them are reporting any issues. Uh, we stand ready once the storm has passed, should there be any issues, to send strike teams out of there. So our healthcare facilities, our nursing homes, and our independent li living facilities all are reporting reporting no issues at this time. Thank you. Very good. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Vagno. And I wanted to ask at this time, I have Nate come on up following Dr. Vagno. And as I do that, just a real shout out to uh, the men and women uh, of Nord. You know, you've stood up uh, our shelter. Nord's going to, Nate's going to give you more info on that. But just thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, everyone. Um, just to back, go back on what Madam Mayor just said, Nord, um, CEO Larry Barambino, thank you so much for helping us stand up that shelter so quickly. Staff have been nothing but professional, helping us uh, feed the individuals. And even last night, when we thought everything was going to get to the worst, your staff stepped up and gave us 24 hour operation. That was amazing. So thank you very much. Um, shout out to all of the first responders who helped transport individuals last night, and bigger shout out to constituents who made phone calls to that individual they saw going down the street. Thank you for 311-911 calls and helping those individuals get to shelter and transport. Uh, thank you so very much for that. Uh, right now, all of our uh, current shelters are full. We still have spaces available uh, through our Nord sites. So we have an individual who needs to get transport to those locations. They are in place. Uh, thanks again to our CEO. Um, who has made sure that we have uh, staff and locations that are stood in place for those locations um, and individuals who are experiencing homelessness, even if the individual is um, somebody who's impaired, we are still trying to help them get transported to the location where they need to go to. Uh, we are also still driving around until the winds hit about 50 miles per hour. We are following uh, the same exact ordinance that um, the ambulatory folks are following 50 miles per hour or greater, we will shut down operation. Um, we will be out for the entirety of tonight until we are told to stop doing transports. My team is out in the field as we speak. I'm also driving around as well, making sure that individuals who are in um, high um, visibility spaces are asked to go into shelter. We cannot force anyone indoors. We can only ask. When those individuals will take, we will transport. So thank you to everyone who's been a part of this process, and we hope that everyone continues to be a part of this process as we get into the next couple of hours. Thank you. Madam Mayor. Thank you, Nate. Thank you, Nate. And at this time, I'm just going to transition into uh, updates from council members who are present, and then we'll get into um, departments. Councilman Green, you want to start? Thank you, Madam Mayor, and I appreciate the fact that in this room there is a gathered such a group of very motivated citizens who are providing resources to our fellow citizens, and I've seen that action happen just on yesterday. We had a sandbag filling episode on yesterday where we filled over a thousand sandbags and we had volunteers coming from throughout the neighborhoods to support their fellow residents. We had members of the New Orleans Police Department who stood with us in the rain and provided support all the way until the end of that um, episode of what we had on yesterday in terms of the sandbag distribution. But I've seen so much going on throughout the district. I want those who are watching to feel confident that there are a variety of individuals, a variety of workers who are well, willing to provide services to you and they're doing so. I did drive the district this morning, my particular district, District D. I do want to encourage us all to not aim for 6 o'clock to be inside, but to be inside as early as you can. Just take advantage of the opportunity to shelter in place. I saw a number of cars that I think that maybe we have too many on the street. So let's just make sure that we recognize that even though there's a mention of the time of 6 o'clock p.m. Let's get inside as early as we can. I do want to also take an opportunity to just say I drove the lakefront. I want to encourage everyone who is considering driving to just see what the site looks like of water coming over the, the um, seawall to not do so. At the end of the day, there's a lot of water in the street there and you could be trapped. But I do appreciate the fact that we have a very motivated citizenry 
a very motivated group of residents in our city who are willing to provide services to others. Everyone knows someone, an elderly person or someone who may be infirm, who could use a phone call and be asked, how are you doing? Be sure to call me if anything comes up. Maybe you might have to bring them to a, the shelter, or maybe you might have to bring them some assistance. But that's what New Orleans is all about, people helping other people. I saw so much the last couple of days in that regard, and I want to encourage everyone to recognize that there's someone you know who could need some assistance. I do want to thank Mayor Cantrell for putting together a great team because this team is in place in many, many w w ways and is working really hard already to make sure our citizens are safer. Those who are watching should know that there's a lot of support for you out there. Take advantage of the resources, NOLA ready. Take advantage of also the 311 option. Call friends and family and let's get through this safely. And the last thing I'll close with is something that's a pet peeve of mine because um, our director, Colin Arnold, mentioned it, the generators. Today, as I drove through the district and I went to a store or two, I saw people buying generators. Really, those generators should be installed by electricians. But if you're going to install the generator yourself, please read the directions and follow them to the, to the T, if you will, because it's so important to be reminded that we lost more people to generator use and carbon monoxide than we did to the storm itself. So, Madam Mayor, thank you for this opportunity. There are a lot of things I wanted to talk about, and I'm glad you gave me an opportunity to do so. Well, you always do Thank a great you. job. And so <laughs> we're going gonna to keep the, keep the momentum going. Thank you, Council Member Harris. <laughs> that, but very briefly, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you for having us here today. I do want to give a shout out uh, to DPW, to the Sewer and Water Board, and to the Drads YMCA. This isn't a competition, but we gave out over 2,000 bags of sand uh, to about 400 cars and people walking up. Um, and so I just want to give a shout out to the folks who made that happen. We had a cadre of volunteers, including uh, people from J.P. Morrell's office, my office, and we had a wonderful event. Um, just a couple things from my end. Please make sure you secure your trash cans, your potted plants. Those things can become airborne um, when high winds arrive. Also, it is the law that if you have pets outside, you must bring them inside. Even if you have to put them in a kennel, make sure that they are safe and inside. Um, we need to care for our pets, our vulnerable people. Um, and so just everybody, please stay, stay safe. And thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you so much. Councilman Thomas. It's amazing how the city comes together in, in uh, times of peril uh, and disaster. Uh, we probably need to use that playbook uh, every day. Uh, it's not a competition between our district. First of all, I want to thank all of the council members who participated in the sandbag uh, giveaway, but uh, District E, we did 2,500. <laughs> <laughs> you did them all. <laughs> <laughs> he called me yesterday said, afternoon saying, I said, could you please back. give us some volunteers? <laughs> yeah, but you know, when, the, when your people need you, uh, it, it doesn't matter if your back hurts, your heart hurts, because uh, when your community hurts, uh, it's time for us to get over whatever our pain is uh, and deliver. Uh, Deidre Kelly, uh, Dominique Lang Jackson, Darren Martin, Lena Stewart, Andrea Mumford, uh, from 9 o'clock until 3, 3.30 uh, yesterday, over 2,500 uh, sandbags. I want to thank the GOSEP team. You guys came and delivered twice. Uh, we appreciated that. Uh, St. Bernard Project, uh, those volunteers who stayed out there uh, with us a while, Mayor. Uh, I want to thank the Archdiocese and uh, Maria Garetti Church for allowing us to use uh, their facility. Uh, you know, I always tell people there's some value in uh, being around, and I was telling the mayor and her team earlier, uh, we've been through this uh, a few times before. Been through it as growing up in this city. I've been through it as an elected official. But I think it's important for the press to know that this time, uh, this time the communication has been stellar. Uh, from the governor calling uh, me to check on our district, uh, from the mayor checking in, uh, to, to listening to Colin Arnold and the people we have here, 
And I will tell you, in the past, the problem was whether it was because of the weather the, or the event, the inability for critical staff and leadership to communicate with each other. That has not been a problem. Everybody who, who has played a role, who has played a role, Madam Mayor, whether it's the governor coordinating, or you coordinating, or critical people coordinating, it has not been hard to get access to. And for the press who was here, in the past, that was the problem. Katrina, it was a major problem. C critical and emergency staff the Friday before the storm couldn't communicate. Critical staff during the storm couldn't communicate. So that level of communication and collaboration is important. Mother Nature is going to do what she has to do. But when we can get together and when we can be prepared, the storm is going to do what it does, but at least we're all on the same page. So thank you and uh, thank your team. They've been clear, they've been concise, and they've worked. The only thing I'll say is that now that we're at the event, uh, based on my experience, that day after or after the last strong wind blows or when the water goes down, historically, I think we're going to have to uh, rely on the press. And I talked about translation of communication and, and what happened in the past when it didn't work, especially for people who don't speak uh, uh, English. And then the other thing is for people who will traverse and drive our streets. In the past few floods, there have been people who, who once they thought the rain was over, they tried to drive under the underpass. Uh, they tried to drive towards the street where they didn't know it was flooding. So I think that level of communication is going to have to continue just to let folk know, wait as long as possible until we can tell them it's okay. But thank you, guys. No, thank you, Councilman. Thank you. One of the things uh, I would say over the past six years plus, this team is battle tested in every way, more so than any other uh, administration in the history of the city of New Orleans. And so, again, there's no better team that I would rather be with than this one right here. And as uh, the council member mentioned in terms of driving with standing water, you know, we, we get this from residents. Well, can you put another sign up after the U-turn? Well, we have the signages up right now. Please follow instructions, read the signs, take necessary precautions, and you will be safe. So with that, we're going to keep it going. And I want to now ask, um, I'm going to start with um, Chief in terms of the New Orleans Police Department. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the NOPD's primary responsibility during this event is to keep uh, the safety of our citizens, our businesses, and not only them, but also our visitors to the city. So with that said, all our officers are working 12-hour shifts, daytime and nighttime shift. All our officers will be in uniform. That includes every division, bureau, detectives, uh, every uh, asset we have will be working. Um, we also have deployed uh, numerous uh, high water vehicles and boats to the districts in case they are needed. I want to thank uh, op uh, the off Orleans Parish Sheriff's Office, the state troopers, and National Guard for providing us with assistance as well. If needed, we'll be able to deploy. We also have uh, sheriff deputies deployed through our various districts. Our officers, you know, we talk about underpasses. Our officers will be monitoring those underpasses for high water and also uh, provide barricades if needed. To those locations. We're also providing patrol with our overhead lights on. That is for our uh, visibility and presence so that you see that our officers are out there. We have asked, uh, you've heard numerous times, stay away from high water. Don't try to drive through those underpasses because that will require you to get help and then that puts our officers in a situation they don't need to be in. With that said, that we'd want, like everyone to stay safe, and if you do need us, we'll be able to respond during this uh, event unless it is too dangerous to respond. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chief. And I'm going uh, to ask now uh, Chief uh, Nelson. Supernet, come on up. Thank you, Mayor, and hello, everyone. You know, the Mayor touched on it. Uh, it is 9 11, and uh, Today, you know, in memory of those firefighters and first responders that uh, sacrificed their lives uh, on that day, we, we remember them uh, as they would want us to by going to work as first responders. You know, your first responders are prepared; they're ready for whatever may come. But we need your help as always. Uh, I think everyone is touching on it. Stay off the streets. By now, you should be home. Your preparation should be done. Right. 
help our first responders to be safe by not putting them at risk to hum, to come out and have to do rescues for people who are out looking around, riding around in the storm. Stay at home, be safe, help us keep our first responders safe. Couple of things, right? Potential power outages. Have your battery powered radio, right? I, I know that might be a, a foreign thing for a lot of young people nowadays, but if you don't have a battery powered radio, Colin touched on it, right? Nola Ready, text. 77295 to know already and you can get those updates and we will make sure you're kept updated on any emergency things that, that you need to know. If the power goes out, flashlights, not candles, right? We see so many fires after the power goes out from people using those candles that they, they have tucked away in the drawer, right? They're dangerous, they melt, they fall over, the they, they uh, curtains blow on to them and catch fire, so just don't use candles, right? Use flashlights instead of candles. Uh, if you have to go out after the storm to check on things, stay away from down power lines. That is a severe threat, right? After the storm, everything is wet, right? A live electrical wire can spread out in all directions. So just stay away from those down power lines and be cautious of that. Uh, try to save your cell phone battery life if the power is out, right? So that you can get those alerts we talked about, right? Keep your refrigerator doors closed and turn off or unplug any sensitive uh, appliances. We talked about generators, Councilmember Green talked about it, right? Those generators, we harp on it over and over again, but, it, but it's because we've seen those tragedies caused by generators, by people who have not used them before and went out to Home Depot today or yesterday and got a new generator and aren't familiar with them and don't know how to use them, right? Carbon monoxide is the real enemy with those generators. Keep them at least 20 feet away from your house, right? And remember that if the power does goes out, you can't just run that generator nonstop, pour gas in it and keep it going, right? You can run it for six to 10 hours. It needs to cool down before you put gas into it again. So just be cautious with that if we do lose power. Know the signs of carbon monoxide poisoning, right? Be aware of that. Headaches, dizziness, chest pains, weakness, those kind of things. If you have a generator running and you start to get some of those kind of symptoms, be aware that that could be carbon monoxide entering your home from somewhere that you haven't thought about. Post-storm, again, stay off the roads. As soon as the winds go down, our first responders are gonna be out doing windshield surveys, checking on the damage. We don't need them to be navigating around you. So again, stay at home until we give you the all clear and tell you that it's safe to be on the roads again. If you have to go out to check on loved ones or some, or some kind of emergency situation, beware of those down power lines like we talked about, debris on the roads, flooded streets, right? Walking around in floodwaters is dangerous. Holes, manhole covers can come off, potholes, debris under the water that you don't see. So again, if at all possible, stay at home. Don't go out there until we give you the all clear and that everything is safe. And finally, uh, if a traffic uh, light is out after the storm, remember it's a four-way stop, right? We see that a lot, a lot of accidents after storms because the power is out and those traffic lights aren't working. So again, be safe, be cautious. Again, if at all possible, stay at home and help us to do our job. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chief. We'll keep it going. New Orleans EMS, uh, Chief Samaran. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, New Orleans EMS has ramped up to full staffing and supported by our surge ambulance contract. We are currently at full operation, but remember that as wind speeds increase, we may pause response for some calls for service that may result in longer response times. Once wind speeds drop to a safe level, we will resume our operations. So just know that at some point in time, you may not be able to get a first responder, police, fire, or EMS, or whatever it is. So make sure um, that you, um, if you have any significant medical problems or whatever it might be, um, that you um, seek shelter with somebody else or, or go to an appropriate place where you might have that help more readily available to you.